Yeah. Okay. I think like while people are trickling in, I think we can also just get started. Um, I'm really eager to get talking about the Gitcoin beta round. Um, and so maybe we can just start out by introducing our speakers who are already up here. Um, well, I'm Lauren, I'm from Giveth, and I'm going to be your host today in this uh, Navigating the Gitcoins beta round with the Giveth Galaxy Twitter space. Um, so I'll just, I'll leave my introduction there and just pass it over to you, Ben West. Thank you so much for joining us today. My absolute divine pleasure to be here with all you amazing humans. Um, my name is Ben West. Uh, I am the grants round lead uh, for Gitcoin, and uh, I am also a human here on planet Earth uh, in the city of Toronto, uh, which is the territory of the uh, Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, uh, the Mississauga, the Mississaugas of the Credit, and a variety of other Indigenous people. Uh, I like to try to recognize where my feet are touching the ground, even uh, when I'm here in the metaverse with all of you. Uh, yeah, so stoked about uh, the Gitcoin Grants Round and, and uh, happy to be at service here on this call. Awesome, thank you so much. And, and let's pass it over to Christopher and introduce yourself. Hey everyone, uh, glad to be here. I'm Christopher. I represent praise i am one of the the, the co-founders of of praise and i i'll leave it at that for for now and i'll pass it to uh, uh isaac cool thanks uh well this is from the team and really excited and really thankful for the space uh we are running one of the feature rounds uh this time with bitcoin uh, and so yeah really looking forward to this space Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And let's pass it over to Amelia. Hello. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Um, yeah, my name is Amelia. I'm representing CommonStack, and I work as a creative strategist in CommonStack. But I like to define myself as a guardian of the earth, of Mother Earth. I'm a climate activist. I've been working in the nonprofit sector for a while. And after discovering Web3, I said, whoa, here's the solution of all the problems that we have in this third sector. So I'm really happy to be here. And I'll pass it to you back or Lauren, because I'm not, no, I don't know who's next. Yeah, that's everybody. Um, Griff will be joining us later to represent Giveth. Um, but yeah, for now, I think we can just dive into to talking a little bit about the beta round. Um, so maybe before we kind of get into some more of the nitty gritty, uh, maybe Ben, you could give just a little bit of an introduction to what is the Gitcoin beta round and maybe some of the differences between this round and the alpha round. Love it. Uh, how much time do you have? I could talk about this for quite a while. Uh, <laughs> um, the Gitcoin beta round is a uh, shelling point for uh, new opportunities for all kinds of new collaborations and coordination. Um, more specifically, it's a quarterly grants program that we at Gitcoin run. Um, we ran 15 grants rounds on the old version of the Gitcoin platform, which was run by a DAO, but was more legacy technology, like, you know, kind of more conventional website with uh, the ability to attach a, a wallet and, you know, uh, facilitate crypto donations that way. Um, but now we have this fully decentralized, all on chain, uh, new grants program. We ran an alpha round at the beginning of the year, which is the first round we ran, uh, you know, for the, the Gitcoin community, kind of returning to our quarterly cadence after four years on the old platform. Um, and that was uh, like more of an invitation only event that was very much for like very early stage testing of the new protocol. Um, this was the first time we've now opened up the round. So we have five core rounds that the community uh, had the opportunity to vote and select. Um, those are the open source software round, the Web3 community round, uh, the core ETH infrastructure round and the uh, climate round. Did I forget one? I think I just said all of them. Um, we also have eight featured rounds, uh, and I don't have my laptop open to, to say what all of them are, but we can definitely talk about it in a bit more detail. Uh, but the gist is that each one of these uh, has a matching pool, uh, and I'm guessing everybody here is familiar with what quadratic funding is and how it works, but you know, really the gist of it, the magic behind Gitcoin is that uh, we 
you know, have all these matching fund partners, uh, some amazing people, uh, you know, shout out to uh, uh, to my colleague Matilda, who I see here on the call, who just got the banner up on the website, which has all the matching fund partners listed. Um, you know, thanks to all those folks who even in the midst of a bear market are throwing some ducats our way to, uh, you know, share with the community. And it's a pretty amazing thing. I mean, they basically give their trust that the community is going to vote with their wallets and help determine how to allocate that funding. Um, and what makes that uh, particularly interesting is unlike a lot of other matching funds where it's like one dollar is matched with one dollar. Uh, in this case, you know, it really comes down to the wisdom of the crowd. And, uh, you know, the more people that donate to a particular cause, even if they give just one die or one dollar, uh, you know, can, has much more influence on how those funds are allocated uh, than if, you know, one person donates a, a larger sum. So, you know, it uh, it really kind of democratizes the way that uh uh, you know, the allocation of matching funds uh, is done and, you know, gives everybody in the community a, a sort of more transparent, more democratic way of, uh, you know, seeking funding uh, with no strings attached, which uh, I think is great. And, you know, it's uh, just the beginning of a, of a whole new uh, set of tools, really, because our protocol, the Allo protocol, uh, is, you know, something that is open source, forkable. People can build all kinds of things on top of it. And uh, I know already there's some really interesting conversations happening between Giveth and Gitcoin about what could be done as well as with tons of other partners. So anyway, maybe I'll pause and, and breathe for a second and uh, <laughs> and we can go deeper into the weeds. But uh, but that's kind of what the program is. Um, and I can just say that we just opened uh, yesterday. So, you know, donations are, are already starting to come in. Um, that runs for two weeks until the 9th of May at uh, uh, closes at 2359 UTC. Wow, this was such a good, this is such a good summary of like both what the Gitcoin grant stack is and also just quadratic funding in general. I, I applaud you, sir. I've, I've been trying to explain quadratic funding also myself and I've never been able to do it so eloquently. Um, so thanks so much for that. Um, and, and actually just like before we move on to introducing all the projects that are here visiting us, I'd love to ask you um, maybe some of like the key updates or key changes from the alpha round to the beta round. You mentioned already that the alpha round was closed community kind of like only certain selected projects and now we have more projects that are open to it but like what kinds of changes and what kinds of lessons learned did you guys pull from the alpha round and, and implement now gosh where to start um so i mean i i guess i could break that down into different categories there's kind of like uh like ux learnings and uh, and frankly those are very much still ongoing uh, as well as sort of more human coordination, sort of social technology learnings. Um, I would say that probably the biggest difference that most people uh, participating in the rounds will notice um, is, you know, that everything is on chain now, uh, which is, you know, got some some hugely positive upsides in terms of like, you know, what's possible in terms of scalability and the programmability of uh, smart contracts and all the different functionality that's possible because of all this being on chain. Um, the flip side is that you're paying gas fees for creating your grant proposal and, of course, for donating, which was always the case. Um, in the past, people might remember that we used to have the option uh, to donate on various different uh, L2s, like you could use Polygon or ZK Sync. Um, that has not been built out yet on the platform. So right now, everything is running on ETH mainnet. Um, and, you know, that has uh, some implications in terms of gas fees, which unfortunately kind of uh, spiked right at the same time that, uh, that the round was getting underway. Uh, so we definitely had some folks who were like dealing with some sticker shock of like what I need to pay money to create my grant now. That kind of sucks. Uh, I think we've noticed that that also does kind of have a, a side effect of being a, a form of civil protection. Like it reduces the number of people who are going to you know, kind of create scam fake proposals because now you have to pay to create a proposal. Um, and one of the beautiful things we've seen organically happening is a, a bunch of, uh, you know, community members started to just like lend money to each other to help them pay for gas fees, especially folks in, um, you know, uh, emerging economies, let's say, or, uh, you know, uh, basically folks who can't afford the those gas fees up front or represented a big portion of their, uh, you know, their available cash. Um, you know, of course, our hope is that people will make more than enough money from the round that it, uh, you know, more than pays for the initial gas fees. But, uh, you know, we definitely didn't want that to be an obstacle or a barrier for people. Um, in terms of other learnings, I mean, I, I think there's a ton of them. Uh, and, you know, I'm, frankly, I'm, I'm really interested to hear from community members about their experiences. 
Uh, we know, I mean, the, the new grant stack, as we call it, is actually like several different tools. Um, there's Builder, which is where you create your grant. Um, and then there's Explorer, which is where you actually apply to a grants round. Uh, and it's also where, you know, we all go to, to donate to grants. Um, on the back end, we call that Manager, which is like where the round operators actually run the round. Uh, and there's Passport, which is the tool we use for civil defense, uh, this distributed uh, uh, decentralized identity protocol, uh, which I'm a big fan of. And, and frankly, I think may be, uh, you know, the the killer app within Gitcoin uh, that's, you know, going to be useful to a ton of people, you know, beyond the grants world. Uh, it's already been adopted by Snapshot uh, as a tool for verifying identity of community members who are participating in Snapshot votes. Uh, and the cool thing about it is you can, uh, you know, confirm your identity without doxing yourself. Like it's uh, an, a non-friendly uh, uh, identity protocol that uses Web3 identity, um, you know, and, and I think could be useful in, in any number of different ways. We're probably not even imagining the use cases yet. Uh, but, you know, definitely some people uh, got stuck in the flow between Builder and Explorer. Uh, you know, definitely anything that adds additional friction makes things harder. And, you know, it's hard to get people to to read. <laughs> I'm definitely guilty of that myself. Uh, you know, even when there's really well documented instructions and guides, like all of us just kind of, you know, have busy lives and a million different tabs open at the same time. So, you know, the more that we can just make the process as smooth as possible, as easy as possible, um, you know, that's probably one of the biggest learnings and, and, and one of the things that we're continuing to work on. Yeah, amazing. And, and I do think there have been already a lot of improvements. I applied both forgiveth in the alpha round and the beta round and it was just a lot smoother and I think also as people kind of go through the motions and like the Gitcoin grants is such a popular protocol and such a huge fundraising opportunity I think there's like people are just going to get practiced and then it's going to become like the like hive mind that we all know how to do it as well um but yeah thank you so much for 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 explaining all of that um I, I'd love to pass it along to a couple of the people here we have representing projects um, who are raising some funds in the Gitcoin beta round. So um, maybe I can just pass it off to, I'll pass it off to you, Christopher, first, so you can tell a little bit more about Praise and um, the rounds that you're raising funds in and uh, the hope that you, the impact you hope to achieve with funding. Sure, thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so, so so Praise, the, the short, short description of, of Praise is, uh, it, it is a tool for, for decentralized communities to, to foster, help them foster a community, a, a culture of gratitude and empowering members to sort of acknowledge and celebrate and reward each other's contributions. So it's a, a super simple tool where it, people praise each other's contributions and then that those contributions are given sort of an impact score. So basically we're building up this uh, really potent data set that uh, has the information about who did what, when, and to what impact. So the, the, the goal is to sort of give decentralized communities their memory back. If we think that they sort of lost their lost their memory when they went from being a centralized structured old organizations to decentralized, more loosely coupled organizations. So we, we help them to sort of find their direction again, or we contribute to helping them find the direction and a collective agency and uh, yeah, we, we are we are raising uh, in, in this uh, Gitcoin run. We have been uh, um, joining uh, uh, before as well. So what we have planned on the roadmap up ahead is to help communities better use the data set that we are, are building up. So we collect the price information, we quantify it, we give it an impact score, and then we want to help communities put that data to, to work or put that data to use. So what we are planning, uh, for instance, is to uh, put a lot of effort into uh, AI-based um, community intelligence based on, on the data, and we can uh, build uh, information uh, reports such as uh, this uh, uh, contributor bios, for instance, is quite easy to, to generate based on the data, uh, organizational charts, uh, newsletters, uh, any any kind of report that summarizes it was what goes on in the community can quite easily be built on top of of praise data. So that is is quite um, nice um, use case of, of praise. And uh, we are also so making praise into more of a of, of a service sort of. We want to make praise more readily accessible to any community. So 
simplify for communities to 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 start using Praise without having to inst set up a server and so on. So we we're building a so sort of a hosted offering for Praise. That is one one key thing that we're planning uh, going forward. Uh, so maybe maybe that is enough for now. Or would you like to hear more stuff? Yeah, that's awesome. And maybe could you let us know also which um, which core rounds or which featured rounds you guys are raising yeah, funds sorry. in? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, um, the uh, open source uh, software round, uh, of course, and we are also a part of the Meta Crisis round uh, as well as the Mantle uh, round. So, so we are hoping to be able to build the rewards distribution method uh, mechanism on top in, in mantle basically when you have quantified your 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 pace when you have the impact score the communities would like to to uh, distribute uh, th that impact in the form of rewards and and we're building a rewards uh, distribution tool and hopefully on on mantle Awesome. Thanks so much. Maybe you could also um, share a link to the grant um, on, on our thread or share, share it with Amon and she can pin it to, to this Twitter space as well so people can learn a little bit more about praise. Um, and yeah, and, and with sure. that, I'll pass it off. Um, I'll pass it off to Amelia from, from the Common Stack, um, who's also one of the projects raising funds in the Gitcoin beta round. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the Common Stack, uh, the impact you're hoping to achieve, and also the rounds you're funding in. Woohoo! Okay, thanks, Lauren. Um, well, I need, I need if Common Stack needs to speak about Common, so I'm gonna give a little intro introduction also about Commons and what the why they care, why we care so much about the Commons. So Common Stack is a think tank, and with the goal of advancing human cooperation around shared resources, and this is the big thing, no shared resources especially with the commons. So right now we need the community support so we can finish our job of providing the, blue, the blueprints and everything that is necessary to allow communities to build their regenerative economies by app applying these principles of the commons with the use of Web3 web tools. So this is the, the two things that we do, is like spreading the commons culture we, and also applying the Web3 tools. And what are the commons? There's a big, uh, big name into the, the commons knowledge that David Bollier describes as a, as a quiet revolution that is pioneering practical new forms of self-governance and production control by people themselves. And this for us sounds beautiful and uh, as a, um, also as a possible solution for the meta crisis. We see the commons as an institution that has all the keys to building this regenerative focused future. That is not also, that is not only a viable alternative for our failing market and state institution right now, but it's also a more efficient one. So that's why we are so obsessed with the commons. So what we what we provide is this blueprint so all the so input communities can use these protocols and this toolkit to build commons DAO. And we are in the perfect moment to use this blockchain technology and the Web3 tools to be to make the commons part of the equation to solve the meta crisis. But the problem is that to do that, there's a lot of work that we have to do. It's like preparing the grounds for the seeds, the seeds to grow, something like that. And that's why our plan involves like a common stack plans to do, to do that involves on one side, we have the Commons Incubator, that is an eight-module program that will educate on Commons and commoning. We'll be we will be introducing the the work of like big names as Eleanor Ostrom, Peter Barnes, David Bollier, and many names, while also helping to set the cultural frameworks for the community health. This is one side, and then on the other side, we have to do the upgrading of our open source tools, such as the Aumenting Banding Care of the Hatch dashboard, so they are easier to deploy. And so we can create a, an open source toolkit to help communities to become Commons DAO. And also we need to keep writing our open source documentations because we need to also to provide the tools, the frameworks and the manual on how to do this. So this takes a lot of effort and energy and a lot of time. So that's why we need, uh, that's why we are applying for into four rounds. 
The first one we are applying into web free open source software, especially like focusing on the commons incubator and then the development, the development of the of these tools like the ABC and the configuration dashboards. Then on the other side, of course, the meta crisis that as I mentioned before, we truly believe that the commons are a solution, are a big part of the solution to solve the meta crisis because our protocols and our tools will enable regenerative funding or for example, commons governance or community building. And then we also applied for token engineering round and because of course it's, as, and, and we are also really related to the TC as, our, as, as a first starting point the first deployment that we did and well and so that's why we are also with the token engineering and the last one is on mantle and because the donation on that round will be will allow us to port this aragon os and build the commons incubator and all the toolkit also on mantle so this is like <laughs> as you see it's a lot of work that's why we need a lot of support and we truly believe that the commons are a great way to solve this meta crisis at least one fundamental ingredient. Thanks, Amelia. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to, to hear about the work that the common stack is doing and moving forward. And also, I, I really love that there is this meta crisis featured round in um, in in the in the Gitcoin grants this time. I think the this like crisis of crises concept where we're combining like technological advancements moving super fast and like poor global coordination just becomes like all the stuff that we're building in the blockchain space becomes more and more important. And I think the work that you guys are doing at the common stack is super important. Um, and actually kind of, I think this is a nice jumping off point as well to, to introduce Griff who joined us. Thank you for joining us, Griff. Um, uh, cause you gave a talk actually about Giveth and the meta crisis and, and like, I think have a lot of great ideas here, but anyway, you know, not to, not to plug what you have to say, but, um, could you introduce just Giveth kind of the, the roadmap and the plans that we're working towards and, um, and, and, uh, just the, what impact we're hoping to achieve with the funds raised from Gitcoin grants. Yeah, uh, given has been a leader in the public good space and kind of crypto since 2016, and uh, we are just going to keep continuing that effort. Uh, we have a donation platform that's really the entry point to Web3 for many nonprofits, and, and we want to continue to be that entry point for traditional and non-traditional nonprofits like mutual aid groups or any group that is excited about like integrating Web3 into their world. And we, we try to do it in a very simple way where it's just like, hey, like, just get an Ethereum address and start raising money and then we'll worry about it from there. But we have lots of cool, exciting programs that we're trying to make it so that they can get more engaged in the Web3 space. Uh, we just recently launched the referral program. And this uh, and the, the core piece of Giveth in our donation platform that sets us apart from most donation platforms is that... Uh, we don't really worry about tax donations. Where we're going, we don't think that taxes and governments are going to be the solution to the meta crisis or public goods long term. We're trying to find a new Web3 way to solve that problem. And so we actually effectively replace the idea of tax deductible donations with givebacks. So instead of having to worry about taxes and governments and filing a bunch of paperwork to get like some kind of discount on your tax bill, uh, you can actually just simply donate to your to verified projects on Giveth and get give tokens in return. No paperwork required. And and what's really cool is we can build that that primitive of donate and get a, get get uh, uh, rewarded for it is something that we can build on top of. So well, we just released this re uh, reward program where when you uh, if you get a referral link and you actually uh, like get other people to donate on give it to nonprofits. A hundred percent of the donation always goes to the nonprofit, uh, much like Gitcoin, which is awesome, right? It's just a direct transfer to the project, which is super cool. But then on top of that, the donor gets rewarded, right, with givebacks. But with the referral program, the the donor and the person who referred the donor get rewarded. They split the givebacks. And you can't do that with tax deductible donations. Uh, the other uh, thing with our donation platform is we really want it to be just the, the default uh, so solution for 
any nonprofit in the traditional world to start using Web3 with. So we want to bring in all the cool stuff that uh, Web3 can offer for nonprofits to fundraise. Of course, top of our list and something that Lauren is actually leading is integrating with uh, quadratic funding on top of Giveit. So we'll definitely integrate with Passport and eventually probably the Allo protocol, but not to start because it's a lot of scope. Um, but we will actually start uh, doing exactly what Gitcoin is doing uh, with the Giveit flavor, of course. Uh, including givebacks and all of these other fun things on top of Giveit. So quadratic funding will come to Giveit hopefully sometime in the summer, if not the early fall. Uh, there's a lot to do on that one. But that's one of the main things that we're raising funds to do is to integrate quadratic funding. We also want to uh, create uh, uh, like a, we're calling it give buy, where you can, uh, or give savings, where you can actually block capital behind, uh, lock capital on Giveit and earn yield on DeFi using like, you know, yearn and very reputable um, um, DeFi products. And then uh, allocate a percentage of the yield to your favorite nonprofits. Or even if you're a nonprofit yourself, we call it give savings because if you're a nonprofit and you got some crypto, but maybe you don't have any plans to do anything with it right away, you might as well like set it up in some, you know, reward, start staking your ether and get like 8% or something, uh, at, might as well while you're holding ether. And so giving this functionality to our nonprofits will be really cool. And the other thing that we're, we're looking at, it's probably going to come out after those two, is uh, making it easy for nonprofits to set their, sell their own NFTs. So these are the big, um, these are the big goals for the year. Uh, we we um, we launched our own PFP, like our own. Uh, yeah, you can become a giver. Uh, you can get your own give it uh, PFP on the platform. And actually, just this week, we were, we made it so that uh, when you um, when you have a give it PFP, you can actually get like highlighted in the donation page for uh, for for your donations, so that the your profile picture shows up on our DAP and. And more utility is coming that way. But we learned so much by launching our own PFP collection that now we're excited to actually give that service to any nonprofit who signs up for a given account. And we want to do all of this and more, of course, like our long-term roadmap is really uh, focused on implementing the things that Commerstack is creating to make to get rid of the whole concept of nonprofits entirely because that that word is gross. I hate the word nonprofit. Uh, people creating value for society should be able to be rewarded for that. So, uh, you know, co in common stack efforts to build token economies around that is really uh, going to change the world and, and eventually give it to all. Also, it's very important to us to integrate with that. So, yeah, uh, with, I think that's enough about give it. Definitely check us out in all the rounds. Maybe, Lauren, I'll pass it back to you and you tell, tell everyone about all the different rounds that give it is in. Yeah, thanks, Griff. Yeah, we're, we're in the not a crisis round open source software. And you can also find us in Mantle. Um, we're, we're in those three rounds. And and actually, we've been talking a lot about um, these different types of rounds and, and not really like we didn't really give too much great context as to like what these rounds mean. So maybe I'll pass it off also now to Ben West again. And maybe you could introduce to us like what are the featured rounds and what was the intention with like pulling these projects in and getting them to like host these featured rounds? Love it. Great prompt. Thank you. Uh, and so excited to uh, hear about everything that's going on at Giveth, by the way. And uh, I, I just want to say that I, too, hate the word nonprofit. Uh, having spent many years of my life in that space, I find that terminology uh, just fundamentally broken uh, and, you know, love what you guys are doing with givebacks and, and all the stuff that you're talking about. It's like super exciting. Lots to, to collaborate on in the days, weeks, months, years ahead, uh, but featured rounds. Okay, so we have eight featured rounds, uh, Web3 Social, which is being run by Mask Network, uh, ENS uh, being run by the ENS folks, uh, Token Engineering uh, with y'all from Token en Engineering Commons behind the wheel, uh, Meta Crisis, which is being run by Super Modular, um, feels very meta for a walkie to be running around on top of this as a featured round. Uh, it's like, uh, feels like some sort of full circle moment, uh, more to talk about there. 
Uh, DSI, which is being run by a group of community stewards. Uh, this one's particularly interesting because it wasn't an org to begin with. It's basically just a group of people who wanted to see a round happen. Uh, and they, you know, spun up a structure. They did a, a vote using the joke race uh, infrastructure to like uh, elect a group of people to run their round. Um, and now they're deploying a bunch of cash to a bunch of amazing decentralized science projects. So lots more to talk about there. Uh, the Mantle round uh, uh, from BitDAO, which you guys are, are familiar with, obviously, with a, a you know a number of projects. Uh, just having mentioned uh, working in that space, uh, our, uh, our our good buddy uh, Disruption Joe, who was running the fraud detection defense team, uh, is actually helping support that round directly, uh, along with the Civil Resistance round, which is uh, uh, run by the fraud detection and defense team, which has now been integrated in, uh, into other work streams uh, at Gitcoin, which is kind of a, a separate, longer conversation. Uh, we also have a Greater China round. Uh, very cool to see that round happening. Uh, if you have any connection to the Chinese culture, we consider you to be part of the Greater Chinese community, uh, is is what it says on the on the page, and I think that's very cool. Um, and we also have this advocacy round being run by Coinbase, uh, and that round has uh, you know some of the groups that are doing like hands on uh, work with regulators in dc fighting the good fight you know in court uh, you know in uh, in congress and in, in all the places uh and you may have seen their uh, uh the nft drop that they just did what was that yesterday feels like several lifetimes ago two days ago um where you can uh, mint this nft through zora uh, there's you know just a small minting fee in the gas there's no uh actual cost to it that goes back to Coinbase and Zora is sending all of the fees, uh, you know, from, from their, uh, uh, you know, platform fees back to the advocacy round. So uh, cool to see them using an NFT as a fundraising tool and, and $1 for every one of these shields minted uh, gets sent back to Gitcoin for that round. And I'm not sure what the number is now, but I've definitely seen tons of them out there. I've minted like, I don't know, 20 or 30 of them myself at this point. Um, so, yeah. And what was the reason behind the featured rounds? Well, this is really the whole sort of uh, strategy that we've got going right now at Gitcoin around decentralizing the uh, the grants protocol. The Allo protocol, uh, you know, facilitates not only building on top of the Gitcoin grant stack, um, you know, but we're also just trying to use the kind of out of the box toolkit, what we call grant stack, uh, you know, those kind of combination of tools I mentioned earlier. Uh, to give people the ability to just like kind of plug and play, set up a grants round and away you go. Um, you know, it's relatively straightforward to do. Uh, we've got this group we've created called the Grant Round Operators Guild or the GROGs, uh, which is kind of a peer support network for people running grants rounds to help and support each other. You know, we've created resources and documentation and run books and videos and all that good stuff to help people set up their grants rounds. And our hope is that this just creates exponential growth of public goods funding and public goods infrastructure. Like we want to make ourselves less necessary and less of a bottleneck in the middle of, uh, you know, running Gitcoin grants rounds. And the featured rounds are all, you know, being run directly by, uh, you know, these community members that I've just mentioned, these various different partners. Um, you know, so we are helping and supporting, but, you know, in, in uh, most of the cases, we don't even have like visibility into the back end. Like it's actually being run entirely by the community, uh, you know, with us just hel helping and providing some support. So, yeah, that's the featured rounds. Uh, and, you know, I think we're going to see lots more independent rounds popping up soon when we sort of, uh, you know, uh, move out of beta and have the full release, which is much more self-serve, where people can just show up anytime, spin up a grants round, do what they want with it. Uh, and the beauty is that if you've created a grant in Builder, um, you know, our tool for, like, creating your grant proposal, you'll have the ability to apply to any of these rounds. There'll be, uh, like, a, a page where you'll just see what rounds are happening and, people will be able to to add themselves to, to any round that they think they might be eligible for, whether it's part of the Gitcoin program or happening independently in between rounds. So yeah, that's the future rounds. Amazing. Thank you so much for that great explanation. And actually, we have Enti in here from the TEC who is actually running a featured round. So um, maybe I'd like to pass it off to you, Enti, and explain a little bit more about what the TEC round is all about and also a little bit about your experience, um, like working with the grants protocol and like any challenges you faced or anything that you're really excited about. Yeah, sure. Well, I think... I may probably just give a quick introduction to the TC, to the Token Game Commons. Uh, so we we are a DAO, um, little over, uh, born a little over a year ago, uh, with the sole purpose of uh, supporting or of building an economy to support token engineering. 
uh, so that we can we can help projects um, build better tooling, better frameworks, better systems for the space to to be more resilient. Uh, I think uh, many of the projects we we have seen fail uh, so far. Some of them fail because of code stuff, but a lot of them fail because of failed um, incentives, failed mechanisms, uh, and so we we want to work to change that. Um, Overall, that's that's kind of the purpose of the TC. Um, and last year, we 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 gave around two hundred thousand dollars worth of grants for these kinds of projects. And we've been thinking about how can we make um, how can we distribute money in a more dynamic way so that more projects have uh, also chance to to uh, get some money to work to uh, to start doing some some cool stuff without having to go through all the hurdles of uh, of our strict governance process, which is not ideal for for you know those projects that may may just want five ten thousand bucks for, for to build an MVP or something like that, and that's that's quite a bit of work to go uh, for a governance process. Um, and so we had the opportunity, uh, and we are very grateful. We had the opportunity now to use the the, the Gitcoin uh, grant stack. Uh, and build this token engineering around um, where we are giving, uh, where we have uh, $25,000 um, a matching pool. And we currently have about 16 projects that are really, really focused on whether it's research of mechanisms or tooling uh, to make simulations or design economies, or even just education to, to make sure that all this information uh, it's propagated and, and more people can learn about it and can practice these, these um, discipline. Um, so far, it's been a really interesting um, experience. Um, I, I think props goes to the Gitcoin team for all the hard work, not only, not only with the platform, but also uh, getting to approve, getting in touch and following up with all the grantees um, making, providing support and all of that, that's, that's quite a, quite a job on its own. Um, and, uh, yeah, more or less that, uh, it's been really great. Um, we, we've had, we haven't had any major issue, but, uh, more than anything, a learning experience that we hope to improve, um, uh, our round, uh, every time and, and have it more complete, refine all the criteria and yada, yada, yada. Amazing. I'm I'm honestly so excited to see the TEC hosting this featured round and and I'm just really excited to see also just like which projects are favored by the community and um and how it all goes. So it's it's so cool to have like also just one of the projects so close in the Giveth Galaxy that's like really actively in the in the weeds of, of using Allo protocol. Um and actually, I have a question because this, this is just my question. I'm wondering, and it's for you, Ben. Um, in order to donate, like if I want to donate to a project, do I have to donate to that project like in each round that I think that they should get a donation for? Or like, is it like each donation to a project somehow counts for all of these rounds that are featured in the core? I so very much wish that it was one single checkout flow, but unfortunately that is not the case yet. Um, each one of the rounds is a separate smart contract. Uh, we are talking about building out, uh, you know, what internally has been called jet fuel QF. Uh, I personally would prefer a less fossil fuel powered uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, name for it. But long story short is it's a, a federated approach to, uh, you know, giving people the ability to do checkout. Uh, you know, in the past, this was all on one central platform. So it was less of an issue to have sort of one uh, central checkout flow. Uh, and unfortunately, it's like a use case that's very specific just to Gitcoin. And, you know, uh, the Gitcoin dev team is not just building for the Gitcoin program. They're building for, you know, every round operator uh, and every potential independent round. Uh, and most times people aren't going to be running like, you know, 16, 17, 18 different rounds simultaneously uh, like we're doing in the program. That being said, like if this is something that uh, we get a lot of feedback from people that should be prioritized, uh, you know, there is kind of this never ending discussion about you know, what features should be the the top of the list uh, to sort of work on building out. Um, but yeah, currently, if you're in more than one round, your supporters need to donate to you in more than one round. Uh, you know, the matching fund calculations for each round are independent of each other uh, and all facilitated by their own smart contract. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's like, you know, there it's like by making everything with smart contracts and everything off chain and decentralized, it's like there, there needs to be a balance and kind of like the the flow. And, and I think it, it actually, I mean, it makes logical sense. I'm like, of course, they're separate smart contracts. But I did have a few people asking that question. So it's really good to know that they need to donate um, to, to each round that they think that project should get a donation from. Um and uh, yeah, actually, so there's one more round that we didn't talk too much about, um, and this this DEI bonus round. And, and I'd love just to get a little bit more context from you, Ben, as well, um, about like what is the the DEI bonus round about, and what what was the inspiration behind creating it? Thank you for asking that. And uh, it's kind of a, an important and interesting experiment I think we're running. Um, and there definitely was some confusion related to the eligibility criteria for this round. Um, basically, we just added a question around the diversity of your team um, to all of the core rounds, and I think many of the featured rounds incorporated it as well. Uh, and what that results in is basically a list of people who were given the opportunity to apply for this extra bonus funding. Uh, and this actually kind of ties into what we were just talking about in terms of sort of a single uh, you know, checkout flow versus having to raise money in multiple different rounds. Uh, the idea here is that this isn't actually a round running on the grant stack. It's kind of just an additional pool of funding that we're allocating to folks who, uh, you know, request it. Um, there's a team that's reviewing uh, the eligibility, just like with all of the feature record rounds. Um, so basically, we've just segmented out all the people that answered that question uh, with an affirmative saying that their team was, you know, basically 50 percent, uh, uh, you know, for lack of any, a better way to say it, just not all white males from Europe, uh, <laughs> you know, which is the majority of people in our space. So, you know, the, the idea was instead of running a separate featured round uh, that would require people to raise money in two different places, that this could be a way to, um, you know, just add some additional funding for people, no matter what they're building, whether it's open source software or, uh, you know, DSI projects or whatever else. Um, and, you know, this was sort of an interesting thing that we saw happen in past rounds where when we did the DEI round in like GR15, GR14. Um, we actually had people applying for the DEI round that weren't running DEI initiatives necessarily. Um, you know, they weren't like necessarily just trying to onboard people, uh, you know, from diverse backgrounds, which was kind of the intention of the DEI round. Um, but like rejecting somebody who was, you know, uh, you know, say a queer Iranian, uh, you know, scientist, uh, you know, who seemed to be kind of an obvious uh, fit for a DEI round. But because they weren't running a DEI initiative, they, they actually wouldn't always qualify to, to be in that round. Um, so this was kind of a way of just like bringing some visibility into, and some thought to like, you know, what does our space look like? What is the composition of our space? Uh, the unfortunate sort of thing that happened was I think some folks thought that this had implications for whether they would qualify for the round that they were applying for uh, or that this question was required. And of course, we've got a lot of anons in our space. Um, you know, so just to be super clear about it, like totally not uh, a question that you have to answer. Uh, you know, not everybody, uh, you know, wants to sort of prioritize this kind of thinking. Um, you know, I definitely got some messages from some of our libertarian friends talking about the woke mind virus. Uh, <laughs> that's a conversation for another time. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the I think the important part of this is like, you know, Gitcoin is trying to help communities fund their shared needs, uh, you know, and there's a distinct community that is looking to increase diversity in the space. And this was a way to, you know, sort of have a, a fund available that, uh, you know, people could, uh, you know, try to be a part of, regardless of which part of the Gitcoin Grants program they were, uh, you know, applying to. So definitely a bit of an experiment. Uh, I'm hoping that it turns into kind of an ongoing part of the Gitcoin program uh, in the future. There'll definitely be more discussion of it in our governance posts and elsewhere. Um, but, you know, I'm I'm personally quite happy that, like, we're kind of making this space and trying to find, uh, you know, sort of new ways of supporting community members. And, um, you know, even without that, uh, you know, jet fuel QF, quote unquote, uh, you know, we've got a way to sort of give people an additional pool of funding that they can potentially be a part of. I really love that, actually. I mean, I, you know, sometimes this is, you know, not meant to be like such a harsh criticism of the Web3 space, but sometimes I get asked to speak on these like women in Web3 panels, which are nice. But like, I would love to see like more panels of just all women who are talking about token engineering or something. So like, I think that like, I mean, it's, it's good to have both, of course, like projects that are focused just on like DI initiatives, but also like diverse communities who are working on building other stuff who also have an opportunity for extra support. And, and I just, I love that that 
that's the approach here. And I, I didn't actually think about it at all. Like I answered the question at Give Us where, where we, we uh, applied for to be eligible for this round as well. And I was looking through our numbers and our stats were something like 83% like women and people of color, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, and, and it just, it makes me feel really excited to, to just see that the extra support there. So thank you. And it sounds like a great experiment. I hope it goes well. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. I, I just want to say that like we consulted a whole bunch with like past DEI grantees. And what you just said was like almost identical to what I heard from some grantees that like they didn't see themselves as like a diversity project. First and foremost, they were just a person working on something that happened to be from a different background or, you know, was, uh, you know, a female or whatever it might be that would kind of qualify you for for diversity funding in a sense. Um, so it, it seemed to me like the, the best approach and, and definitely there was a lot of discussion that went into it. And, and there's a, a big team of, uh, you know, past DEI round participants and, and others within the space that are are helping with the eligibility decisions around it. So, yeah, anyway, I just uh, I, I just really appreciated what you said about sort of a panel that was about, say, token engineering that happened to be women instead of a panel about women in the space. Uh, I, I think that's an important distinction. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I, I'd love to also just like open the floor up to our other speakers here as well, just to jump in, like if you guys have any other questions or any other thoughts um, about like navigating the round or tips for fundraising or, or anything you really wanna say here. So I'll just kind of like give you the space. If you don't have anything to say, I will pick you out. <laughs> Okay, well, feel free to jump in if you come up with anything. And um, in in the meantime, I actually have another question actually for you for you, Ben, because something I've been wondering as well with with passport and because we have had a lot of people in our community in the alpha round who are trying to do donate who had some just issues like they're they're real humans. They work with Giveth and uh, they weren't able to get like the the passport score and and then like then we were using the Gitcoin staking and identity staking stuff. And I actually just wanted to know like a little bit more detail about like how the passport score works and is there like um are there is there extra matching if you have like a, a ridiculous score or um is it just like everybody gets matching over like the minimum threshold first of all lauren i'm loving the burr noises in the background behind you uh <laughs> uh the so passport uh has had a huge overhaul since the last round in fact even during the last round there was some pretty serious overhaul happening uh, what we found happens in Gitcoin grants rounds often is basically we break other people's protocols when we send too much traffic to it all of a sudden. Uh, and I think that's basically what happened with the ceramic network uh, during the last grants round was there was just like the way that the tool had been built. It was just like asking for way too many pulls on their API. Uh, and long story short is we had to like retool things right in the middle of the round to try to like actually make it possible for everybody to to get their passport stamps. Um, so not only has that been changed pretty substantially, and, and uh, you'll also notice that uh, there's very much a sort of lunar punk aesthetic to it now, which is uh, is very cool. Uh, we actually have work streams now that are uh, named after lichen punk, lunar punk, and solar punk, which uh, I, I love. Um, but yeah, the uh, the lunar punk team who's involved in uh, in the passport uh, rollout, you'll see is is now a much easier process than it was last time. In fact, you can do all of your uh, kind of wallet based stamps, like all the sort of web three stamps. So whether that be, you know, amount of ETH in your wallet or, or GTC, uh, or identity staking or, uh, PO apps or NFTs, like all that stuff that was a whole bunch of separate cl clicks before you can now just do in one click. Uh, you know, so for basically anybody who's like already active in the web three space and, you know, has a wallet, um, it, probably will just be that one click, uh, you know, to get your passport uh, uh, verified and get you over that trust score. Um, we've also tweaked the way that the trust score is calculated. Um, so now it's like 15 out of 100 uh, is the, the number that you're going for. Really, we're just trying to increase the quote unquote cost of civil attacks, like, you know, just creating friction and barriers for those who try to use bots to like, you know, mess with the grants round or you know, in some way, uh, you know, try to benefit from it through airdrop farming or whatever it might be. Um, you know, the idea is to try to like separate the signal from the noise and like really highlight where the community support is, not just like, you know, what seems like the best airdrop opportunity. Although I'm all for, uh, you know, turning DGENs into regens. That's a whole other conversation too. Um, yeah. So if you, uh, you know, were not 
uh, quote unquote Web3 native. And, and I think we need to perhaps kind of take a step away from that terminology, because truth be told, uh, even if you have a wallet or, you know, you've got a, a, a bunch of bored apes or something or, you know, you hang out in the DeFi space doesn't necessarily mean you know how to navigate the UX on the Gitcoin platform or any other platform. Um, you know, the, I, I think. But the, the long story short is if you're like very new to the space, um, you should still be able to get enough stamps from kind of legacy web tools like connect your Gmail, connect your LinkedIn, whatever, uh, red flags, LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, if you if you connect those tools, uh, you should still be able to get a high enough score to be able to qualify. Um, right now, it's really just a pass fail. Like, you know, you can donate either way, but you'll only qu- qualify for matching funds if you have uh, at least that minimum passport score. Uh, there will be in the not too distant future uh, more functionality, more tools, more sort of ability for round managers to like really set up the scoring in whatever way they want. Like right now, it's kind of just like an on off switch, like use passport, don't use passport with the scoring we've created. Um, that is going to be something that you can really fine tune, uh, you know, when running an independent or featured round uh, in the future. And we may even have different scoring approaches for different rounds, depending on sort of the level of trust and transparency, um, you know, all kinds of different factors. Uh, I'm personally really excited about the implications of like attestations and impact certificates for eligibility processes. Like, I think we could really streamline the eligibility conversation by, you know, taking in more information, uh, you know, from uh, projects when they're applying and using Passport in that way. Uh, so yeah, lots to, to unpack there. But in terms of your uh, your question, yeah, it's basically just like a pass fail. Uh, if you've got that uh, uh, high enough trust score, you count towards matching, um, so you don't get additional uh, uh, matching like you used to. If you if you have more stamps, although that might be something that happens in the future, um, and uh, yeah, maybe we should also change the word passport. I don't know why we keep using state language. Anyway, uh, I see uh, Christopher's got his hand up, and I'm rambling on, so I'll I'll stop. Thanks so much, Ben. Yeah, Christopher, you got your hand out. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, I was wondering if if we as a as a project are accepted to to a bunch of of, uh, of different rounds. Is, is there any like best practice on of how we best can guide our potential contributor to to sort of uh, support us in the the right round, or will they be able to select on the checkout page themselves, or how how should we go? Uh, we as a project go about uh, this. Uh, ben, do you have any any suggestions uh i mean the best answer i've got is basically like carefully slowly and repetitively uh (laughs) like i I think it's going to be confusing for people it probably will take some like reminders and hand holding um you know i i would definitely suggest doing things like office hours just to like you know walk people through it maybe even like a loom video of like this is what uh donating to us looks like you know, there perhaps is a strategy part of this, like if there's a bigger matching fund in one round than another, or if, you know, you're seeing that the majority of your supporters are going to one round versus another, uh, you might want to think about like, sort of just what you make your call to action, like, should you direct people to, to the one that's got the biggest potential match for you? Or should you try to like, make sure that you've got people showing up at all of them? Um, You should also definitely make people think about gas fees, uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to get people frustrated that they have to pay gas every time they donate in multiple different rounds. Um, you know, so thinking about uh, like bundling your transactions, um, you know, so that you're like, you know, doing all of them sort of later at night or, you know, at other times when gas fees are lower. Uh, you know, you could uh, uh, definitely also talk about like, uh, you know, just coordinating with others within the rounds so that, uh, you know, people aren't trying to do multiple checkouts. Uh, like, you know, if, if you're kind of co-promoting with others within a round and, and kind of cooperating, um, you know, maybe that makes it a bit easier for people to, you know, feel like they're not spending as much on gas in a sense if they're like, you know, spreading the donations around to a bunch of different projects and then paying gas as opposed to like, you know, every time they find a project that they want to donate to, they come back and pay gas again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think there's unfortunately not like a super simple answer to it. It's just going to be a, a handholding process and a communication, like kind of learning curve. And I think sort of like Lauren was saying earlier, like it's a muscle that we're all building collectively. Uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll all get sort of uh, more used to this platform. I, you know, there's definitely a lot of uh, sort of collective muscle memory around the, you know, 15 grants rounds that ran on Gitcoin's platform the old way. 
Um, you know, so I think it's going to take uh, a little bit of time for us to kind of all just get more accustomed to the way it works now. Hey, a quick question for you, Ben. Uh, for if someone doesn't quite make the uh, the the passport score, I know that there's this community staking with GTC, which is great because I love to see more use cases for GTC out there. Do you know how many points it'll actually get somebody before they pay the gas to move, to use it? That is a really good question, and I don't know the answer, to be honest. Uh, I, I know that the exact sort of uh, scoring is, like, kind of the secret sauce. And, you know, I, I think there was always kind of this, like, arms race with the civil attackers where we're, like, sharing a bunch of information, but not too much that we make it too easy to sort of help uh, civil attackers find a pathway. <laughs> um, that being said, I, I think that definitely is a question worthy of like uh, a closer look, because I do think there's like sort of a gas fees calculation kind of conversation there. Um, and would love to see more sort of identity staking at a station sort of ETC utility uh, applications in the future. I know there's some nifty stuff people are talking about. Cool. Awesome. That, that was my best not really answering your question and answer that I've got. No worries. I understand. I understand. No, it was good enough for me. I'm like, cool. This is a question I will go and find somewhere else and tell people about. Um, Wow. Okay. Um, we're almost at the top of the hour. And um, so I just like want to thank everybody for coming and joining this call. Thank you so much, Ben, for jumping in. You have so much knowledge and experience and you were so good at explaining things. It's like such a privilege to have you in the space here. Um, yeah. So, so thank you so much. And thanks also to our speakers, to Christopher from Praise, from Enti from the TEC, from Amelia from the Constat, Griff from Giveth, and of course, Almond, who's the mastermind behind making these spaces happen. Totally a pleasure to be here with all of you. Amelia, we should talk. I love meeting other climate activists in the space and uh, so much love to everybody in the Giveth community and all of you out there. Uh, uh, good luck in the round. Uh, totally happy to be of help anytime. Feel free to, to drop me a DM and I'll, I'll try to help however I can. <laughs>